You were hung up with that homie that does his homework one hour before it's due. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode. It probably will be our last episode of stand-up comedy on History for Fools. I had an awesome time with my good pal, with a comedy bible, the master. This guy holds two BSs in comedy. <laughs> BSs. <laughs> the, uh, the <laughs> Bush the Escobar. There is BS. Butch Escobar. Unless you're in Morgan Hill and if dad's around, call him Bob. Call him Bob. Right. <laughs> you're listening to my story. Oh, man. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun doing research on this. I've had a lot of fun looking <coughs> stuff up. Oh, excuse me. I mean, to be honest with you, man, this has actually uh, in, enhanced my career. It's made me appreciate comedy more. It's made me love what I do. I feel like I'm actually in like a, um, I don't know, fraternity slash sorority of, of, of people or that I'm in this special group of people that I never really thought that I was a part of before. Yes, and um, I, I'm, a, I'm almost sad to say goodbye because... We didn't really talk about uh, female in, females in comedy right. or Latinas in comedy or black uh, black well, female comedians in comedy. Um, but you know what's crazy that um, you think, do you think, this is a question that nobody asks, but this is the history for fools, and we're talking stand-up comedy. So. Right. Russell Peters was already blowing up, right? Right. In the he, he's 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 um okay. Indian comic. Uh-huh. I wouldn't even consider him an Indian comic, just all around cool dude from Canada, and um, great dude. He's from Ham. Great dude. He's from Brampton, um, Canada, and he was already big, you know. But do you think more Indian brown face comics? Because you know, there's 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 Mexican American media, you know. I look like I'm from, I'm from Pakistan, but I'm not. You know, this guy looks like he's from from Qaddafi's <laughs> cousin right here. <laughs> Trench is out. Give, give him a washiki, and it's over. <laughs> so I used to be married to Khaleesi. <laughs> I gave her two dragons. Anyways, so do, uh, do you think 9-11... Helped a lot of Indian comics get recognition afterwards. I, yeah, I mean, anytime they were already yeah. around, but um, like, like there's comedians out there, you know, who are like Indians, right? They're right. not Indian, but they're Middle Eastern. They're from Afghanistan. They're 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 from that area, like Samuel Bade. Right. Um, what's his name? Ahmed Ahmed, who I grew up with. I know Ahmed Ahmed since before 9/11, and he had funny bits, bro. Uh, but 9/11 made him more popular because right. he was doing he was he, he was part of the Axles of Comedy tour That's right. with Mas Ma- Ma- Jobrani. I do remember the Axis of the, yeah the Axis of Comedy. Yeah. Hold on, the terror attack right now over us. Hold on. Okay. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that plane. Speaking of, there's Speaking a plane, plane crashing into our. So own. those guys, I met a man. We're gonna get back to natives, but let's talk about quick, quick briefly, you know. Well, because I, I think yeah, man, there's there's uh, a lot of groups of people that we didn't get to cover on this. I want to cover it. Yeah, we want to just guys. kind of touch on something. Because they they got more of them came out during after 9/11. But before that, there was Jerry Bednap, the turban cowboy. You know him? No. He was he was the Indian guy from Forty Year Old Virgin, the old man. Oh, I know exactly who you're. Talking I worked about. with that guy. I used to book that guy at Wild Coyotes. And he used to open up his show like this. He's from Toronto. Right. Short, long story short, um, Russell Peters and Jerry Bednap had a had a pilot or a pilot deal for a show in Canada back in the days about father and son with him. Nothing happened. Which is, I just gotta say this: that in Canada, Indian people are the most visible minority in that country. Like they're the visible minority. Right. Like you might go to like Atlanta. And you might see African Americans, but you might go to Wyoming and you won't see them, or you might go to um, California and you see a bunch of Mexicans, yeah, but then you go to Augusta, Maine, you might not see them. Right. But Indians per capita, they're all over Canada. And I'll tell you right now, there hasn't been a sitcom about an Indian family in Canada yet. 
like Indians from India family. Yeah, no, there hasn't. That's right. I never even really. There are more Indians from India and that area, you know, Middle Eastern area than than they are First Nation there's natives. There's a lot of um, Indian prevailing comics right now coming out of um, coming out of everywhere. Namesh, Namesh Patel here, the special. Right. Then there's um, Sugar Sammy. Sugar Sammy. Um. I'm trying to think. Minaj. Hassan Minaj. Minaj Atwa, that dude. Hassan Minaj. I can't. It's, uh, and they, 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 they're hardcore, you know, like, they, they're they like, because Jerry Bednop had one-liners. He'll open up a stage. He'll open up the show wearing a turban, bro, like a little turban. Okay. And then he'll bump into the microphone and go, oh, there goes my dad. <laughs> there goes my dad. <laughs> and he'll kill it, bro. Right. And he goes, yes. He goes, he, he, he's from Bangladesh. He'll do jokes about Bangladesh. You know, he'll be like this. Yeah, they, um, or India, he'll say that um, they have the biggest population in, 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 um, in, in wherever he's from, right? And he said that the way they, 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 um, they, they, there was so much traffic that they, what they did to um, lower the population, they had a red light. To lower the population? They had a red light on the street. They had a, they had a street lights, a red light. How did that lower the population? Because now people are stop, the people are not stopping and they're getting hit. They're getting hitting each other. Oh, <laughs> that's fucked up, dude. That's fucked and Jerry up. Jerry Benner had a bit about. He goes, a woman was attacking New York, and um, she said they beat her, they assaulted her, they did this to her. Yeah, everything about her was me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> So there was Jerry Bednob, legend, man. I used to see his name when I was looking, when I was doing open mics yeah. as a comedian. I would open up the Alley Weekly and look. Because as a young comic, I don't know how internet, how people look for for open mics now. Maybe they know comics or they go on the internet. Is there a, I want to get back to this right now, but yes or no. Is there, is there, is there, there's pages where you could just look for open mics somewhere, right? Well... I mean, nowadays, back in the day, it would be like a website. Like, we had one in San Francisco, SF, sfstandup.com. But now on Facebook, there's groups. So you got, like, San Francisco um, area. We have Bay Area Comedy Network. And then I know that L.A. has its own. I think L.A. has, like, three or four. So, and then in those groups on Facebook, you're able to find, like, like um, open mics in your area and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like... Um, you know, yeah. There's there's ways to find out where your open mics are, um, how to find them, and stuff so like that. So when I started looking for an open mic, I didn't know. So <coughs> I had a I had a comedy book on how to write comedy. It was called Comedy Writing: How to Be Funny, Write Funny, and Make Money from Being Funny. And then on the back... Who wrote that, by the way? I don't know. Do you remember? No. Okay. But on the back of the book, uh -huh. it had all the comedy clubs, numbers, and addresses in America. No way. That's pretty dope. So, um, and then the back, I said, once you get funny, and if you have the guts, mail them a tape. <laughs> Those comedy clubs probably hated that book for the longest time. Yeah, so that's my... That was, somebody's here? Oh. That was my reference that book okay. and um so that, that was very helpful that's but how you were able to like navigate. i knew the clubs no way yeah and there was another comedian there was a, another magazine called comedy usa okay and that comedy usa it was a magazine a magazine willie barcena had it and i think he paid for it or he got it from larry omaha they were real friends okay and it, and, he, and that list had all the comedy bookers named on it like if somebody is booking NACA, their names are there. No way. If somebody is booking army shows, military shows, all the all the military promoter names are in his magazine. I don't think you could find that. And now. all the comedy clubs names and who to send the tape to, comedy clubs were there. Comedy comedians that were headlining, who are doing great, there'll be a little bit article about them in that magazine. This is before the internet. Okay. And, and then that, I think the magazine cost $150. For the subscription? To buy it. 
Too and far. every month, every every month or every other month, it changed because then the, the booker will be gone and it'll keep it updated for you. It'll, that's I mean that would have been worth. That it was so useful. Yeah. That I never held the I never had to hold the magazine before because Willie had one. Then later on, Dante comedian Dante and Shang Forbes comedian Shang. I know. Yeah. They had a comedy list that you could buy, and it was seventy five dollars. And a lot of people griped and said, $75 for this? Why would they just give it away? Why would they? Why would they give it away? Let me tell you, why wouldn't they give it away? Because Dante Comedian and Shang Forbes worked all these gigs, and now they're giving it to us. They worked really hard for that information. They worked for this list. And that list, I'm getting the goosebumps right now. I never had, sorry to say, guys, I never had the money for it, but uh, Joy Medina was the kind of guy that will print everything for us. Nice. <laughs> Shout out to fucking Joey Medina, bro. So, the list, Butch. Why, this why, list, wait, wait, hold on. Why the, not pay for it? Because, because you're gonna pay. Someone's gonna buy it and then print it out to their friends. Yeah, but the list cost seventy five dollars or whatever money it was. It w- it will save you ten years of agony. Totally. It was, that list had a list of good promoters. And shady promoters. Oh, wow. So uh, there was a list of a promoter that, that didn't pay on time. And there was a, a list of a comedian to avoid. Then they had all the, the NACA gigs. The, the, um, there was a, the AT- NACA's college, by the and way. And then ATF. Yeah. That was a guy that performed for the military. And okay. they had all that list. Oh, wow. So, yeah, man. And that's, I would pay for that information now, bro. I would pay. But there was no, li- there was no information like that now. No. Now people do a gig, they come back, they, they don't say nothing. Yeah, <laughs> fuck no, bro. I mean, dude, the best is when someone hits hits some like when someone hits me up. I will say this: if someone hits me up and says, "Can I have the information that you got to get that gig?" Oh, you trying to take my gig? And, it's, and if it's okay with the person, or if it, I don't think it's a problem, I'll send the person that information because it's like it's up to you to get hired or not, bro. I don't care. But I know that a lot because I've done that before with comics where I'm like, "Hey, how'd you get that gig?" And they're like. Uh, you know, a, I had a friend who led me to it, and it's like that's that that. In in other words, that means I'm not gonna give you any of the fucking information that I have, and and that's how nowadays that's how we are. Uh, like, I wish I I had the magazine just to show it to somebody, just to show it. I want to find that. I want to find it. that magazine. It was Comedy online. USA, and then the Laugh Factory had a magazine too back in the days, but I never got one either. That they were putting out every month. I thought comedy was hot, bro. What the fuck is going on now? Because you know they, it died. So why why have a magazine? Well, you should have did it with Latino and Black comedians and Indian comedians. And that comedian, should. I would have bought it. We still should. Yeah, but there was like all this help. You know that if, if you knew people, you knew how to find it. Right. But, I think there's some cables of people that do that. I mean, it's not in magazine form. But I know that the ladies have their own group now, like in the Bay Area where I live. Shout out to the ladies, by the way, um, uh, that um, they have their own group. They uh, they definitely help each other out. Um, they they give each other information. Yeah, um, Marcel Arguello does a show on Wednesday. Um, yes, on Women Crush Wednesdays. Women Crush Wednesdays. And um, great lineups. Every I, I remember uh, uh, it was all women, right? Yeah, and. And I and I had to ask her, has any male comic approached you with some bullshit yet? Yeah. And she said, yeah. All the time. She said some comic hit hit her up and said, how long can you sustain this? Like we're gonna run out of women at some point. Like there's not enough. Have you ever asked that to a black comedian? That's a fucking real indicative. Like it's a the, it's a white comic, of course. That's the thing is when a I hear white comics comic. say that 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 women have it easier than they say in comedy. That's a fucking strong indicator that they don't. They when, don't. When the when the when the when the casual belief is is that there's not enough women. So at some point you're gonna have to run out and you're not gonna be calling it Women Crush Wednesday anymore. Fuck you to whoever that guy is, bro. And fuck those guys that are like that. That's and that's why women need to 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 do what they do. And I think this is a pretty good segue into Gene Carroll, who you yeah. brought to my attention. Yeah. Dude, and it's funny, like it's always a white comic or an angry, angry, self loathing, hating Mexican, bro. Yeah. That'll go watch 
uh, 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 go watch my go watch my stand up for example and they go and you know, the rights or I would say me for example because I'm putting it on me I don't want to say another friend another Latino friend because I it'll, it'll feel like I'm talking about him you don't want to throw anybody under the bus yeah on this episode. I'm just saying for my example me right. somebody will write oh he gonna do Latino jokes yeah and like okay and no and then like They'll do, so, but this person right here, this South Haitian person, he'll go on um, on Jade, J.K. the Preda, for example. Okay. Uh, very fun, co- funny comedian from Brazil, and she was recently on another podcast. And dude, she's funny. And all the comments on the bottom. Why does she gotta? She women always gotta do dick jokes. Women always gotta do this. Like we don't. Women always gotta do that. It's like this guy will. These people will find anything to say about anybody, cause, like, dude, a lot of men talk about sex. We don't. Men, we don't own the monopoly on sex jokes. Do you talk about sex? I love sex. I talk about sex. Who the fuck doesn't talk about sex? A woman. So women are. Women not- lay down all the time. <laughs> they don't have the right to talk about sex. They don't have a right to talk about sex. Or if they talk about sex, this is all they oh, talk about. Oh, women can only be funny when they do sex jokes. No. No, nah, man, you, never, you didn't see the whole act. But this is the struggle. And <laughs> it's then, a struggle and, and for women. And this is 2022. So imagine what, um, 1945, 1930s. Bro, there's male comics. That I watch a female comic special. Break it all down and email her the notes. I've seen that. Why? Yeah, I've heard of that. I Who mean, I've, are you? I've heard of this happening. Or they'll go, hey, a little advice. I saw you tonight. If you want. And it's like, what the fuck? No, bro. No advice. Nobody's soliciting. The special already done. I can't go back and rewind, cocksucker. But it doesn't even matter. Nobody's asking for it anyway. Nobody's asking, like, that's the thing, man, is like every once in a while, um, I'll get it, and I'm sure women get it way more, but I'll get someone like, hey, I saw that you did this, or go fuck your mother, bro. I don't, like, unless I say, hey, what do you think? Then if I don't know you, I don't know what you think. If you're or, my friend, then that might be different, but. Like sometimes, man, like people, people go watch my bits, right? and they'll write something like, oh, I love him because. He didn't talk about being Latino, and I said, "Bro, you only saw five minutes. You only you, you need to see you, me you live." Got one clip, then, bro. Yeah, or they're right. Oh, you never. I like him because he don't focus on being Latino, and like, dude, he goes. Then they never go walk up to a white comedian. And go, oh, he's doing white jokes, right? And they pretty are white jokes because they're white centric for sure. Yeah, because yeah. they're talking about um. They're complaining about Mexicans, their act. They're talking about, sometimes they'll complain about shit that are just easy to get for them that aren't for us. And it's like, or they'll like, oh man, uh, my three bedroom house, my, oh, I gotta mow my lawn. I don't have a fucking lawn, bro. Some white comics have it easy because they could sing Volver, Volver and get a standing ovation. <laughs> Great, you can speak Spanish with an accent. <laughs> like, <laughs> congratulations. On use of your tongue. My wife is Latina, so I could talk about piñatas now. Right, yeah. There's I think that you marry too. your white wife, your Latina wife, just for the comedy. There's that too, yeah. So, like when Paul Rodriguez, I spoke to Paul Rodriguez. I Rodri- think you married your white wife just for comedy. Comedy. For the, I, there's some guys that I'm like, did you just get with your girl just so you could like make jokes about being with a white person? Also, man, if you're a young comic. If you if you have a comedy show where well, there's gonna be ten comics who are your level, get there early and watch the whole show, because you don't want to be in a show where everybody talked about the same thing. Right. Gabby Lamb was telling me that she went to a, a woman show, and he goes, she said like, I can see why male comics hate us. <laughs> have you ever felt that in a room you're in? <laughs> yes. When I do Latin shows, sometimes like. Like, too many of us are doing the same fucking, my mom used to beat the fuck out of me jokes, or my mom was abusive jokes. But you gotta have a, you have to, like, I don't, you know, they always tell you, well, I have a different take, see? Right. My mom used a paddle. Yeah, dude. 
<laughs> okay, people. No, I did that premise differently. Fuck you. When I was a younger comic, everybody had my mom used to beat me with a matchbox. Right, or like a racing car. Hot wheel, hot wheel, fuck hot wheel it. track. Yeah. Or my mom used to beat me with an iron while it was still on. <laughs> My dad beat me all together. He said we had a little race to see who's faster, and my dad kept running and never came home. Bro, I remember a time going to this like all Latin showcase, all, and I had a joke about chanclas, like your mom throwing your chonk her chancla at you. Like I was like, this is gonna fucking kill. And I got there, and there was like five different versions of chancla jokes. But you're the only one that was thrown to the audience, right? Was the only one had him on. <laughs> but I did a show at the Laugh Factory where everybody was talking about having a white wife. And guess what? I have a white wife too. Right. So the host was talking about his white wife. Then the next comedian, I forgot who it was, he talked about his white wife. No, Eric Rivera was the host. Okay. He talked about his white wife. His wife is white. He's Puerto Rican. Okay. I don't know what, yeah. Or Nicaraguan. So, um... And then uh, he brought up this Cuban guy that does old comedy, very funny guy, the writer. Yeah. And he talked about his white wife. Then somebody else went up and talked about his white wife. But they were all funny. Okay. So then I went up. I said, God damn. You don't want to go over the white so, wife? So, no, man. So I went up on stage and I said, oh, man, I wasn't even supposed to be on this show. I was walking by. And then somebody said, Felipe, don't you have a white wife? <laughs> I said, hell yeah. Come on in, man. <laughs> it's fucking white wife night tonight. You crushed it. Crushed, crushed it, bro. Crushed it, bro. Fuck, that's because it's that's just a, it's a very like because that's really what it is. It's the variation. It's the clever variation that is is what's gonna separate you from everybody else's jokes. Yeah, and then like um, there's there's comics that um like Paul Rodriguez, George Lopez, Angel Salazar, um Joey Vega. These are the comedians. Joey Vega from New York. He started in New York. And um, these guys, man, like like Joey Vega, he's a, he's a, he's a comedian from, Puerto, from, I think he's Puerto Rican, and he, he writes for Chris Rock. He, he wrote on a Chris Rock show. Oh, really? And he, 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 he written for him. He has opened for him on the undercover. Shout out to Joey Vega and his tight t-shirts. Shout out. <laughs> his tight but Joey Vega and Angel Salazar... And there's another comedian that I opened up for. I just can't think of his name right now. And Mike Robles. You know Mike Robles? It's a Latino. We're talking to a Latino comedian from the East Coast. Right. Mike Robles started um, a, a comedy show on, um, on, the, on, on the outside cable networks. What's it called? Channel 3? Local Access. On the Local Access. He had Comedy Picante live from the Carolines. On uh, Comedy Picante, right? No, li live from the New York comic strip in New in New York. And this was just on public access. Public access. Okay. And um, it got so hot that they told him, let's do Que Locos on Telemundo. And um, him and a promoter manager out of um, New York named Roger Paul, they made a deal with Galavision to put up a f the first ever Latino... English only comedy show on on an all Spanish network. All Spanish network. It was Que Locos, and it premiered in 1998, 1998, 1999, and it went. It ran all the way to 2002. That's the and, first time I ever saw you. And I was a nine. I was on nine episodes, bro. I hold the record of being on nine episodes, and I did warm ups for all those nine shows, all the episodes. And the reason I got to do all nine episodes because sometimes a comedian will bomb. Or, and, and they will ask a, a Latino comedian that's there, you want to go up? <laughs> no. Really? So Felipe go up into another different eight. No so shit. So I do a different eight. Fuck yeah, bro. And, um, and um, so that was like the first time that all of America got to see Latino comedians for the first time ever. Like I will see people that will greet me and go, oh, I love, I love watching my, you guys. It Every was in, Sunday. I, I was um, not yet even a comic when it first came out. 
There was not even a uh, star in my eye for it. And when I saw you guys come on, it was like so inspiring. So, because like I'd never seen anything like that before. And I mean, you'd see Paul yeah. Rodriguez or, or George Lopez maybe, but I didn't know who any of you guys were until that came out. Yeah, man. The, I, I did the first season, it was in New York at the comic strip. And it was already, I, 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 was, I, was, I hosted the first episode, the first season, bro. The first show. And I was nervous. I had short hair. Oh, I wore yeah. a black suit, bro. I didn't do well. I'll tell you right now, I did not do well. So I didn't host the second show like I was promised. So <laughs> the, other com- the other comedian ended up hosting the show, and I got to be on that show too okay. as a guest. So I did two sets. Well, you still got a set then. Yeah, bro. And I helped book this show, bro. Me and Gabriel Iglesias. But this is me. Before I helped book this show that they needed comedians, bro. And uh, you know how you and I made that Latino comedy list? Yes. For Coachella? Yeah. That- him and I and Martin Rizzo put that list together. So, so when and everybody, anybody, anybody needs comedians, go to that list. So back then there was no list. Right. I, I, we did their job for them now. So <laughs> We did. We made a list. And it was a, it's a comprehensive list. Yeah. So back then they just went to the Ice House Laugh Factory looking for like, any Latino comedians, bro. So, get, so, man, dude, what a time to be young, you know, performing, touring. It's, it must que locos. It was big, dude. Did I mean. You get, did you, like, because, like, before that, I imagine you weren't getting recognized anywhere. And were you getting bro, recognized people wanted to make out with me when I got off the stage, that's dog. That's fucking amazing. I felt like Bruno Mars. That never happened before. That's never happened. And they were all ladies who were 60 years old. Well, I mean, you know, you take what you can get at that age. Did nah, they didn't want to make out with me, but it was big, dude. It was so big. Big. It was so big, que locos, that. It was massive. Gary Iglesias ripped his shorts on stage. Okay. And they auctioned him out for $400. Get the fuck out of here. What happened to que locos? Why did it... Uh... The executives were bothered by an English-speaking show. This is the part I remembered because que locos was such a hit on Galavision. Yes. That... It, you know when you watch a show? I couldn't it, wait for it to You know out. you watch Happy Days? Yeah. And that's a lead-in show right. for Laverne and Shirley. Sure. Que Loco was a lead-in show for nothing. For nothing. So you got these people, 800,000 people watching Que Loco on a Sunday, and they all change the channel when it's over. When it's over. And so that kind of affected... It affected the, the novella that was afterwards. The programming and everything. It affected the soccer game that we before that. So... If you were gonna watch the soccer game, you were you were waiting for Que Loco to end it end end because it was all in English and you didn't speak English, so you, it, they would turn it off and then go watch the third. So if I'm speaking Spanish, it was messing I'm up their audience because I want to watch my fucking soccer sh- sh- game. Soccer's big, and there's these American guys telling jokes in English. So um, Que Loco's ended, okay, and then. They did the Latin Kings of Comedy with Joy Medina, Alec Ramundo, George Lopez, Paul Rodriguez, the true kings, you know, and right. um, that was hot. They went on tour. So after that, the guy who produced that show produced um, Bad Bo- Bad Girls of Comedy with Snoop Dogg. Okay, I remember that. And then the same guy, Scott Montoya, he did one with all Native Americans. Okay. And Charlie Hill host was the host. Charlie Hill hosted that one. Yeah, and they had um, a great comedian who is probably the dead, the best deadpan comic out there as far as deadpan goes. Um, Von Eagle Bear, J.R. Redfeather. Okay. Um, Larry Omaha, and um, I have a Mark Jaffe. Howie Miller, Larry Omaha, Jer Redwater, Charlie Hill, and Vaughn. Eagle Bear. Eagle. You showed me some of Vaughn's stuff earlier. Yeah, today. Vaughn Eagle Bear, him man, and I, we never met so personally, funny. but he's a funny native comic. Craig Vaughn Eagle Bear, he has funny bits. Like, um, go to his page, but he has a bit that's like this. My favorite white wine is, how come we don't have a casino? <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. Um, 
I and also I wanted to just throw out a couple of names that I got to talk to some guys, uh, Zach Abeta and Josh Fournier, who are out of. Uh, I met them in Albuquerque. I don't know exactly where they're out of, but as we were putting this together and we were doing the Native American pieces when I met them, and it was really interesting to know that they're still like they're they're still out there. This is this struggle, even though it's a part of the history, is still happening right now, where these guys are doing all these um, uh, reservations. I know, man. Like. It's any reservation. Why don't you book in um, Native American comedians? Right. Why aren't Native American comics being booked in? I'm pretty sure in China comedians? somewhere there's there's Asian comedians out there, right? Totally, totally. But that that guy, um, there's a there's a comedy troupe that that was touring in in uh, in in, 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 in um in Native reservations. Fourteen. They were doing theater. They were called on um, fourteen ninety one. Yes. And um. There are they don't they have like um And one of the guys comes out on Red Dogs, he's that guy that goes, ah! Dallas Dakota. Dallas Goldtooth. Dallas Goldtooth, but his yes. tooth is not gold. His teeth are not gold. Dude, um so JR Red Feather. Red Feather, Greg Von Eagle Bear. No, Von Eagle Bear. And and there was another comedian, a younger comic. They they were touring together. And they were selling out gigs together, man. And they were tight, you know. They were tight. Right. They were doing it. They were touring, making money. And then when it came down, when it, when they called them up to do that, um, the Native American taping. Yes. Guess what? What happened? They were beefing already. They were beefing. Who should headline? Get the fuck out of here. Who brings in the more crowd? That's a very similar situation. I feel like to another group of people, <laughs> to a few actually ethnic groups of people. And then there was a an, an, an uh, older comedian from the from the from back in the days. They said he should go up last. And then they said, "Well, you go up last." And they told the other comedian, "Let him go up last." But when we edit. We'll put you last. We'll put you last. Oh no way! And did the guy going last on on the live version know that they were gonna do that? Oh my god, dude! Natives. Fuck. Hey, I'm not gonna say that. Lat I'm glad all Latinos get along, bro. No, fuck no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> dude, when I first came into this business, I didn't know that. And so I just kind of roamed around, and then I started to find out, like, like these guys are beefing with each other. Bro, when I met George Perez, and then I, I talked to him on a podcast, but before we, we started getting along, because he was hanging around with Jeff Garcia a lot. Right. He told me, man, when I first started, I thought it was like a gang, eh? <laughs> like, we don't get along with them. That's how I felt it was, too, when I came out here. When I came out here and started hanging out with all you guys, I'm like, it's like being in a fucking gang. Being, like, what side can you take? Let me tell you, man. Being part of a crew is being is like you're being you're being part of the family. Your you eat with them. Tested. You do the same gigs with them. You ride in the same car with them. That is kind of, and that's kind of, I think, where it comes from, though, man. Is that because, like, like, like you come from that mentality of when you're a younger guy, like, man, young, living, like, being in the streets with your homeboys. And you ride together, you eat together, you fuck around together, and then you go from that to comedy, you know. And maybe you enter the working world for a while as an adult, but you get into comedy, and you know. And I don't think this is for everybody. Like I don't think this is all the the demographics, but for for us, it was like I got in, and it was like, well, who do you fuck with? And it's like, I don't know who I fuck with, you know. It's like, do I have to make a choice now? And and but I think that comes from being starved out of you know um, yeah it, it's an indicate it's an indicative yeah. symptom of what the fuck is actually happening. But that, that that's what I, I, that, that that native american that drives all the way from blackwater what's his name um let me the guy that drives John, it's johnny uh johnny roberts johnny comedian johnny roberts you're lucky you get to go home you gotta deal with this shit right eh? but see there's the thing though man is that I think that's where the beefing comes from. 
is because we're starving. Because for us, bro, because I because we've been around a long time, we're able to get around and do more. But if you're a new Hispanic comic, new black comic, um, there's not a lot of places for you to go to do your thing. And especially back then, there's not a lot of places for us to go. And I think even now, there's not a lot of places for us. So when you get work, when there's work out there, you fucking fight over it. I need to mention this. There's another comedian, uh, Native American, who I thought was Mexican. He has really long hair. His name is Steven Michael Quesada, and he plays the officer, Latino officer in Breaking Bad. And I met him when, do it, when we were doing comedy que locos, before they hired Mike Robles, it was a guy that was a clown, and his name was Happy the Clown, and he was from, from Corpus Christi, and he was the host of the original Que Locos, and that's where I met no Steven way. Quesada. He had long hair, right. and I was like, where you from? New Mexico, I'm from LA. It was, bro, that Que Locos, before Mike Robles, I met a lot of comedians from everywhere okay. that were not from California. Right. And Latinos. Now, Latinos, bro. Wow. Happy, bro. Happy. Not yeah. fighting, not beefing. Ready to perform, bro. So it's not a, it's not what I said it was. It's more something Back else. in the beginning, yeah. What do you think it is then? Oh, man. Because um, Latinos, comedians, black comedians, Asian comedians, female comedians, and Indian comedians, we believe like... These are marginalized comedians. We believe that there could only be one. Uh, fuck. We know there could only be one. That th- we know there could only be one. F- true example. I was on Last Comic Standing, and um, oh L- Lil God. Rail was talking to these three other African American comedians, and um, Alonzo Bowden was already on the Last Comic Standing before, okay. and he passed by and goes. Y'all know y'all ain't gonna make it right. Like that. Y'all know y'all ain't gonna make it together all the way, right? Right. Oh shit. Like you guys are not gonna be friends at some point. You guys are gonna be No, you're gonna be friends. But you're gonna be against each other. No, you're gonna be friends. Right. But you're not gonna all make it to the top ten together in last common standing. Right. Or in in comedy altogether. No, no, last common standing. Last common standing. Last common standing. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It doesn't there will be no ten black comics top ten, bro. No, okay, you're totally right. There will yeah. be no top ten Latino comedians. Oh fuck! So he was telling them that, and then um, Lil Rel ended up being top six. So I was the last comic standing. I made it through, and I felt no one can take me because I didn't know anybody. Right. I don't know. I didn't know these comics from New York, bro. Okay. It's West Coast, baby. Right. That that ain't, ain't gonna fly That's over our here. Thing. Maybe if we were in New York, you probably would have won. Right. So I saw Cristela Alonso show up, bro, looking like Dora the Explorer, bro. <laughs> this before the sitcom, before writing a book, before before man Before the makeover. Before every before, right. you know, being a successful before being a, a successful comedian, you know. Right. And she was shy. She was there too. And I saw her as my only threat. <laughs> Nobody else. Nobody not the else. Black comics, Nobody not else. The white not Tommy John again. Right. Not um. Not not Kurt Metzger. And this is a real though, but it's a real feeling. Because, a real feeling. Because there is only one. Yeah. And oh so I thought God, about it. okay. Hit us against each other. We need to get somebody to break her legs. <laughs> you like like what was that? Uh, what's the skater? And. Tony Hardy. And I wouldn't have even been thinking that to Alonzo Bowden told them, right. you know, y'all are going to make it all the way together. Alonzo Bowden got in your head by walking So by. Here, now let's go back to these Native Americans, bro. Okay. There ain't that many. None. But the yeah. few that they are, and they're all different tribes too. Right. Don't forget that. Oh, and it's tribal. They're, they're, some of them are Latoya, Latoya. La Toya. Some of them are Dakota. Some of them are, are fucking... Dakota. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, was, I was all, yeah, it sounds right. Latoya. The only time you see natives getting along is when they're in a movie and they're all wolves. 
And even them, I'm pretty sure these tribe members are are beefing by craft servers, bro. <laughs> I was gonna say they're be- they're going back to their trailers, going fuck these guys. Yeah, bro. Because because I'm in a comedy, sh- I'm doing a movie, and there's a Latino that I don't know, right. and I see him yapping, and I'm over here by myself, all quiet. What the fuck talking so much? Right. He's talking more than yeah ha- than lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Holy I'm shit. in the back going, oh, he must be nervous. <laughs> I have a lot of questions now, man. So there you go, really right? So the native comedians are beefing. Right. Right? And comedi- um, Native Americans are naturally funny because I don't know if, if, if you're listening right now, if you've ever been to a powwow, powwows run for days, three days. They party. 72 hours of yeah. partying. First of all, it takes 10 hours just to find parking. <laughs> that powwow line is powwow. Yeah. You, you could be like this. We're almost there. We're by the gate. So I followed the comedian on TikTok who yeah. went over there. And um, Native Americans are funny on TikTok. Bro. Great on fr- TikTok. Brony, bro. This yeah. is, like, I learned, like, I use some of those tags when I do casino now with a native. He goes, he goes, um, this guy does it. He, he, he does a deep native boy. He goes, "Hey, if you're going to the powwow, before be sure to take your wife because there's a lot of wild aunties there." Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and then I know that aunties means sanchas. Right. Yeah. Side chicks. I remember when we were in El Paso, and that was the thing that like, I we said were it. talking about that. Yeah, and they lost. They it. died. All the natives were dying, they were bro. Dying, bro. They fought. Cause let me tell you something right now. Why we need native comedians? Why we need female comics? Why we need African American comics? Why we need Asian comics? Because representation, man, is very important for everybody. Very important. We love watching baseball, but we also love and. Love more when it's front of Venezuela. Right. When you see yourself. When you yeah. When, somebody, yeah. Somebody you could relate to. Yeah. I think when, that's a huge when deal. You were at, when I was working at Dodger Stadium, proud Japanese Asian Americans showed up who never would have shown up just to watch Hidel Nomo. Yes. Totally. I, you know, and we were talking about this earlier off, off, um, off podcast, but I was telling you how... When Paul Rodriguez did his special on HBO, my parents meant to get HBO for a month <laughs> and cancel it because they just want we just wanted to see Paul. Paul was such a big deal back then to us, and they ended up keeping HBO after that. So, so HBO brought this whole new demographic. So you got to think about it, man. Given Paul Rodriguez and HBO special back then did the magic because Paul Rodriguez was bringing in Mexicans, Americans, and Latinos to HBO before oh Oscar La Jolla started wow. fighting. That is so true, dude. So everybody that had an HBO box back then got to see his Caesar, Caesar what's the name, Chavez, Chavez fight. This is before Caesar Chavez. Yeah, before, this is before Roberto Latinos Duran. Before watching HBO for fighting. Before watching Sugar Ray I Roberto Duran. I never thought about it like that. Before boxing. Yeah. Paul, Paul Rodriguez, everybody at the HBO because of Paul Rodriguez back then. I don't think Paul Rodriguez gets enough credit for that shit, bro. He well, does he not, should. He does not get enough credit for that shit. And um, bro, when I saw Paul on Born East LA, and let me tell you, that's the only reason I watched Born East LA. I didn't watch it because of Cheech. No. Because Chong was in there. I saw that Paul Rodriguez was in there. Let me there. tell you, man. I don't know why. I know where you're going to go right now. <laughs> when Cheech Marine showed up with Chong and no mustache, I was angry, bro. I was too. I was fucking livid. Put a fake mustache, homie. Get fu- bro, grow it out before you come out here, dude. I was too. Like it was like sacrilege or something. Bro, I didn't even know that um, Chong was in an R&B band before yes. hooking up with Cheech. Yes, totally. And did you know that Cheech at the same time was making pottery in the forest of Canada. Really? Yeah. His whole originally he was a potter. He wanted to be a potter. He left here because he didn't want to go fight in the war. And um, he became a potter. I knew he was a hipster. Yeah, he's a draft dodger. I mean it's in his book. And so a I'm Dodger not, fan. I'm not, you know, shout shout out to dude, shout out to Teach Marin, because that guy was my fucking hero growing up. Me too. And um 
Like he owns all the Chicano like arts. Like all I ever wanted to do was be like Cheech Marin. And so See, when I read this got book, the mustache? he was. A, that's why I have the beard. That's um, why you look like strawberry. Eh? I overdid the. Mu- <laughs> <laughs> Star fuck, fuck, Star fuck. Cousin fuck. Red over here, right? <laughs> What you looking at, man? <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, he was a potter, and then he moved. To, he moved to Canada to follow this like famous potter, and he worked with him for a while. And then during a break or something, he went um, to Toronto, and Chong was running this really low rent that his parents had owned. It was like a low rent fucking strip joint, um, and he did really like he was doing like some theater with it, trying to do some weird shit. And Cheech would show up, and then they started to get along and talk, and then they started to do sketches with the strippers, and like, and not like nasty sex like um, sketches. They were like doing comedy sketches, and that was the birth of Cheech and Chong, and and that's that was was crazy to me. But before that, he was in um, Chong was in what was the R and B band? It was like something coast the Ventura, the Ventures. The Ventures, yes, yeah. the Ventures. Dang, man, yeah. He was clean, good, fucking pile, pile with glasses, huh? Totally. He had that pomp with the yeah. hair going back. You could and, not um, even tell it was it was Chong. When I when when um when I started stand up comedy back in the days, I went to the comedy store because they were starting Latino night, and I didn't know who to meet. And um, there were so many other um, Latino comedians that were not famous, that were just funny, man. Like, there was a guy named, um, oh, man, I can't think of his name, but they were all before performing at a comedy club in a valley where I live right now, on Balboa, and, um, and I don't know the name of the street. It was called the Comedy Connection. The Comedy the comedy Connection, man, the valley. Okay. They had two rooms. And then that's where you ran into all these guys. The Vancouver. Because he's from Canada, Bobby and the Vancouver's. That's right. Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's. So, man, like there were all these comedians that were Latino yeah. that were not Paul Rodriguez. Right. You know, there was a guy named Frankie Car- Carrasquillo. Carrasquillo. He had thick ass glasses. He goes, My name is Frankie Carrasquillo. And, and I spell that with 30 R's. <laughs> They have a big. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at that. It's so yeah. fucking funny, dude. He had big fucking bifocals, bro. <laughs> bifocals. He was skinny, old man. Skinny dude. And he'll fucking take off his glasses with these glasses. I can see the future. <laughs> and he puts it behind his head, the past. Nice. And then, um, and he'll, he'll close out the, the at his show by impersonating Mick Jagger, bro. Okay. He goes, I'm going to do an impersonation of my favorite black performer. <laughs> And then people say, Michael Jackson, I said black. <laughs> and then he goes like this, ah, ah, right, all right. I met a little drink and queen, oh, baby. That's and he'll do the whole hilarious. dance, bro, and close out that show. He'll wiggle around like him and everything. That's so funny. And then there were these comedians that were from, um, I think they were from Venezuela. They were um, Jorge and Juan or something or whatever. Mm-hmm. They were twins, bro, and they would perform as a duet together. Wow. Then there was uh, a comedian, a female comedian named um, Debbie Gutierrez. My, then she got married with Debbie Gutierrez Myers. She did stand-up comedy, and she, she used to uh, perform at the Ice House. She had a pilot. And then uh, one of the first ever... Latina comedians to get a sitcom before um, Cristela was um, this female comic that I met at the Latino Laugh Festival when I was a younger okay. comic. She was the drummer on the Selena movie. Okay. The drummer in the Selena movie? Yeah, I know who I can't think about. of her name right now. I don't now. know her name, but... I- Jackie Guerra. Jackie Guerra. Jackie Guerra. She okay. was a stand-up comedy, bro. Okay. She had a sitcom on Channel 5, on UPN. No way. Starting from... I don't know. No, it was on, it was on, it was on Channel 5, UPN. Okay. It was, and, and guess who was on that sitcom with her? Who? Um, Leah Remini. Wow. That was one of her friends. And I, like King of Queens. And Leah I, yeah. Remini, like the yeah, whole, King like, of Queens. Uh, what do you call it? Scandal. And, the, and Jackie, bro, yeah. all the female Latina comedians at the time were hating on her, 
and she, and she had her show. It was canceled, though, but she had it like for about a year. Whoa. And um, well, that's what we do. We get upset and, um, when somebody else gets something. When I first started doing stand up comedy, there was a comedy show on Channel Five, same network called Comedy Compadres. Okay. I don't know if they heard it in the Bay, but they heard it here. And um, Carlos Mencia was the host. And Comedy Compadres. Never heard of this. Yeah, and um, they would bring up comedians like Bill Torres. He he got married to Jackie Guerra. She, her show, Jackie Guerra sitcom was called First Time Out. And this is like the early 90s. Do you know what it was based on? It was based on her life. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. She had the same agent as Willie Barcena at the time. She was doing colleges, and then no she. No one be- talks about this. By no the one way. talks no about it. No one fucking talks. That's why we're talking about it here on History for Fools. Fuck yes. And built. It was on a WB network when okay. WB was new. Okay. That's when they had like. But WB turned into UPN. So that's when they had. Yeah. That's when they had um, shows like Homeboys in Space. Yes. And so and wow. uh, and, and um, the Wayans Brothers and Eddie Griffin had that show. I remember all that when the WB had a bunch of minority uh, shows on it. Yeah, and she had her own. She had her own show. Bas- basically, black and Hispanic, but mostly yeah. black. Yeah. Wow. And man. I think Hailey Berry might have been in that sitcom, bro, but I'm not sure because I remember there was a real pretty black girl that was light skin on that show, but I don't know who it was anymore. Wow. So that she ended up, her and Bill Torres got married, and Bill Torres was doing stand-up comedy with Gene Pompa back in the days. Okay. And Gene Pompa um, was, when they did it back in 1996, they did the Latino Laugh Festival. That's the one where I met John Mendoza. I met Greg Giraldo. I yeah. met Paul Rodriguez. George Lopez didn't do it, right? And um, the guys from um, that that um, that comedy troupe, the real famous, the comedy one, they had their own sitcom, Culture Clash. Culture Clash. Was the Latino Laugh Factory. And Culture Clash, by the way, had their own show on Fox. Wow. And they would premiere I stand-up did not comics. Know this. Yeah. On Fox, Culture Clash had their own show. Then after Culture Clash got canceled, John Leguizamo had a show I remember with that. improv. It was called um Busting Loose. Busting Loose. Yeah. And that's where they had um I almost said My boy, out, Louis yeah. Guzman. Louis Guzman. Funniest sketch ever seen on that show was when um, John Leguizamo was dating a woman. They're on a date. He's real pretty. She's real pretty, and he's real pretty. And 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 now uh, John and um, Louis Guzman is on a date too with a pretty woman. And the whole time, John Leguizamo can't enjoy the meal because he keeps looking over there. How could that hot chick be with that ugly motherfucker? Over and over, he kept saying, leave it alone. No, that guy is horocious. Look at his fucking face. <laughs> He's fucking ugly. He go, leave him alone, man. He go, let's get out of here. And they walk away, and the sketch ends with Louis Guzman looking at him. That's the ugliest motherfucker I've ever seen. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, dude. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, getting back to Joey Vega. Yes. Joey Vega wrote for that show. Okay. Wow. And um, a lot of the comedians that were writing for that show, bro, never wrote on shows. And a lot of the white writers got their computers. Okay, so and I Joey wanna... Vega told me that they were do- they were they were they were bringing, they were writing other sketches on notepads and sketches and turning them in. No shit. This is a real motherfucker. These are real break motherfuckers in for a right and here. Just point out that uh, thus far, we had been doing research on all the stuff we talked about, but this is you. Your own experience. Yeah, from Latin. This from, is shit that you don't. You didn't me, do any research here. This, this is, is me that. This is I, what you know. This is what you, I know from so growing long. up in comedy. Right. So, comedy compadres is done on Channel Five, and you, you can still find the videos. Go to um, go to you go to YouTube and look up comedy compadres. It's um C O M E D compadres C O M P A D R E S, and just put um. Channel 5. That show was done. So then this big time producer named Nelly Galan, Mm -hmm. who ended up marrying Paul Rodriguez, and Paul Rodriguez and her got divorced. Paul Rodriguez had a baby from her. Okay. I don't know. We should leave this. Yeah, it's a known fact. Okay. That's his ex wife. She's a millionaire. This isn't Paul Rodriguez Jr. This is. No, this is the older, older. 
older okay. or probably younger. Right. So um, check this out. Here were Paul and Jeff Valdez. Jeff Valdez was the executive producer of of um, Comedy Compadres and um, House of Bugging. Okay. House of Bugging was a show from John Leguizamo. He produced that too? Yeah, and um, he started a network called CTV, but that's afterwards. So Def Jam is hot right now. Def Jam is hot. HBO wants a show to mimic it that's Latino. So Nelly Galan, Jeff Valdez come up with an idea called Local Comedy Slam. Hosted by Carlo Mencia. And every week it premiered the city. Put it this way, man. From me talking to those comedians, none of those comedians were dirty as fuck. But the executives, the showrunner of that show, right. were begging them to be dirty. Can you be as dirty as Def Jam? No way. So so you had all these They comments. wanted them to be raw. No, no. I don't know, you know, I don't know if that, 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 that wasn't their thing back then because the Latino comedians back then were so afraid of being dirty because they, they thought they were going to get no work. And you back then, you everybody said, you got to be clean. You got to be clean. You, that's when I you got to be clean. Yeah, when I first came in uh, 17, 18 years ago. You got to be clean. So then you got. Everybody was like, you have to be clean. So you got Carlos Mencia hosting and they're telling everybody to be clean. Everybody to be dirty. So Willie Barcena does the show. Jeff Garcia does the show. He's like 17 years old. Damn, Jeff Garcia. That's right, Jeff dog. Garcia. First comedy in the business. But he was young. He's paying dues now. You know, <laughs> and, and Satan. paying dues now. <laughs> anyway, so this fool goes, kills it, right? And he had a leather jacket, bro, with rhinestone in the back that says La, La Fuente Bad Boy. Who's this? Jeff Garcia. No way. Okay. The dazzled, bro. Because he dazzled he, like a motherfucker coming in, acting like. Bro, that fool's crazy, bro. That fool spit on on fucking Dice Man's boots. No shit. Did Dice Man lay him out for that? Fuck no. He probably ran, bro. Cause he was wearing black leather boots okay. and a jacket. Right. But that's that was that was them doing um local comedy slam, right? Bro, this is how the show ended. It ended the same as Def Jam. Carlo Mencia will host the end the show and then introduce Paul Rodriguez, the executive producer. And he'll say thanks and they walk away. Okay. Did you ever see Def Jam the way it ended? Yeah, with uh, Russell Peters, Russell Simmons coming down. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Out. Good night. So they will host, end the show exactly the same way. Wow. When they were auditioning. They emulated. When they were, yeah, when they were auditioning the show for local comedy slam. No, sorry, comedy slam. I showed up to the comedy store. Young comic. I didn't. I even. I didn't even know they were showcasing. How many, how many years were you in at this point? Fucking, well, I don't know. Four, two years. Wow. I was young, bro. Three, four. Not enough to know who, what the fuck was going on. Right. Not to be. Not not enough to know what's what the Latino scene about. So, um, uh, Freddie Soto is there. Rest in peace. How many words in the words shaken? Fuck yeah. Um, Luke Torres. Luke Torres was a beast, bro. A beast. He ended up being on Living Colors, and um, I remember Luke Torres. and um, Johnny Sanchez, young comic still. So Johnny Sanchez comes up to me. He goes, "Bro, bro, bro, bro." You know, he is excited, bro. All jittery. Yeah. He goes, "You need to be on that show." And I said, "What show? What time does it start?" <laughs> How do I get there? Well, I'm stupid, bro. I'm a young right. comic. I feel you. I was young. What time does it start, bro? I have a, I have a. I have a, I'm walking with a back with a, my notes, bro, and a fucking tape recorder in my pocket. Are you happy to see me now? And um, <laughs> so I don't know. I said, "What show? What time does it start? Who am I going after?" No, bro, they're auditioning a show. Oh, what show? It's some show gonna be on HBO. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Great, but, sounds but, good. But not. I was such a young comic right. that the words. Fuck this motherfucker What are you in my head dog Right You had no You were so innocent Isn't it weird how Cause I didn't come into comedy An innocent human being But I was innocent hey, in comedy It, it, was, it yeah. wasn't like when I, when I was watching Standard Revolution and shit Right But yeah. um <laughs> or, or, or Someone might have watched the show Right But um yeah So I, I, was, I didn't know bro So 
Comedy Slam ends, blah, blah, blah. So that's, and then years pass, bro, years pass. And that's when um, Mike Robles decided to do Que Locos. Okay. So you know how many, there were other shows before Que Locos, but then. I had no idea. I had no idea about any of those. And then there were people. That's why Que Locos was a big deal. Yeah, and there was a lot of comics, bro, a lot of comics. Like from Willie Barsena's ilk, you know, from his era. Yeah. I don't do no Beaner show. I don't want right. to do that. I don't want to do that fucking another that Mexican show. And then like when I and in, in retrospect now, motherfuckers, you were on a comedy show, but they were telling you to be dirty. Right. That, that's a retrospect now. Right. You were on Comedy Slam. Yeah. You you were on Culture Class show. Right. You were on fucking Comedy Compadres. You don't want to be on Que Locos? Right. Are you a fucking stupid idiot? What's wrong Some of these you? guys didn't want to be on Latino Laugh Festival the first year. Why would you not want to do that? They didn't want to be associated with a Latino show. That doesn't matter, dude. But you're, I learned a long time ago, bro, that if your people don't love you first, no one else is. Nobody else is going to love you. No, and I, I, I think the and thing... Remember, it also goes back, remember Richard Pryor was walking with, with, Richard Pryor was walking with um, Red Fox, and Red Fox was revered. Right. By the people wherever he wanted. Right. And nobody will revere Richard Pryor yet. Because he was not. He goes, doing I that. want that. Right. Yeah, bro, because you were you were there doing those main street rooms. Fucking living in Berkeley, fucking trying to hang out with the Alties. Yeah, totally. That's uh, honestly, man, that's the thing that I see now too. Is like uh for me coming in, I didn't want to be, get put in a box, but I also wanted my people to love me. And so like I wanted to make sure that my comedy was fit in with them yeah. and everywhere else. I, I think about that all the time. And then, like, people say, like, I don't want to be considered a Latino comedian. All I think about is Ryan from The Office. Right. I don't want a nickname here. I don't want to be considered that guy. And what did he do? Burn the microwave? Now he's a burning guy. Now he's something. Let me tell you right now, man. If you don't want to be considered a Latino comedian, you're going to be considered something. I don't give a fuck. If you if I get to put in a, if they go hey we're gonna put you on this fucking all Hispanic lineup and you're gonna tour, but even though you don't do fucking Latin comedy, you know we're still gonna put you on. I'm not gonna be like well that's not my box man that's not my demographic. It's like fucking put me up, get me in front of people. Because- like how can you be like for example how can you be an alt black African comedian who's afraid to do a show with with um. D. Ray Davis, right on on the Improv, which is the hot ass show. We got a few of those in the. Bay. It's a hot ass show. They're afraid to bomb in front of other comics. Is the biggest fear they have because they can't match that fucking black energy, that energy that's on a black comedy show, and they're afraid of it. They're so. But you could of it. do it, bro. There's a, a African American comedian named Warren Hutchinson. Okay. And him and I were in a comedy sketch group. Oh, I was in a comedy sketch group back in the days. That's with with Chim Pompa. Really? Chim Pompa. What was the Warren name? Warren Hutchinson, Sully McCullough, um, these two female comics. It was called um, the late the night night show with Jim Pompa. And the Pumpalicious. <laughs> I was part of the Pumpalicious. That's funny. This is when I was a young comic, bro. Shout out to Jim Pompa. Yeah, for real. When I was on um doing Latino Laugh Festival. In San Antonio with um, Pat Buckles, this is the Latino history as far as I know it, from the 90s. Um, he put in a good word with me about me to Pat Buckles, who was the host of the show. Okay. And then Pat Buckles loved me, right. and she f- she fought for me to, with Jeff Valdez to put me on the show. Oh. And when, um, when I got on the show, People Magazine had a one-page article about the Latino Laugh Festival. Yeah. How they were explaining that, saying that funny is funny no matter what. Jeff Baudet did in an interview. And we have a comedian, Felipe Esparza, right. who talks about his father walking around the whole neighborhood and collecting old furniture and bringing it home and fixing it. And, and realizing that later on, the TV doesn't have furniture channels, but it was not on the oven. He scored the whole joke on People Magazine, bro, back in 1996. No shit. Yeah. Do you still have that magazine? Do you have that article floating around so, somewhere? I don't know. Philip burned it when he got mad. I don't know. Oh, man. No, I don't know. But um, but that was the beginning, bro, of um, putting people 
of Lati- Latinos you know on television. You know how long that took? That was 1996, bro. That was 1996. Well, the comedy Hey did was in the 80s. What, right. 16 years later? Yeah. They didn't, and, and we're still underrepresented. And now we have fuck, um, we have Frankie Quinones. Thank you. We have for Chris that. Estrada on this fool. Fucking shout out we to We have this Christelle fool. Alonso who did her produce and star her in her own sitcom. Right. You know, it didn't make it for a whole year, but fuck it. You're, you're still in a record. Record books, girl. Still doing no it, girl. one could ever take that away from you. Nobody could take it away. And a AK Pablo. You know how long it took from AK Pablo to that show? Or from George Lopez to that show? Yeah. Bro, it was it was Paul Rodriguez, AK Pablo. Or Desi Arnaz. I yeah. love I dream of Lucy. Right. Paul Rodriguez. Jackie Guerra show. Right. And um and then George Lopez. And then the uh, the the fucking brother the, the brother Garcia on, on, Did on Nickelodeon. Did Freddie Prince have a show too? Freddie Prince Jr. I don't remember. No, Freddie Prince regular. Freddie, uh, it was um, Chico and the Man. Chico and the Man. Chico. Paul Rodriguez told me that when he had his sitcom, that the National Council La Raza, and um, and Lulac, Latino United, whatever. Yeah. That they those two those two companies, those two. Latino organizations have never gotten along, but they got along together two times. One time to try to cancel Paul Rodriguez's show, <laughs> and the second time to get rid of the Taco Bell dog. Get the fuck out of here, dude. That's fucking hilarious. Fuck. To get rid of the Taco Bell dog. A lot that's of a, lat- high, that's a lot, of, a, a lot of Latinos who were like up there, yeah. and I call them the three one thousands. Why? Because those are the people who don't like blood in, blood out. Yeah, dude. Who doesn't? How the fuck? Like, if you grew up my age, if you're my age, if you don't like blood in, blood out, you're a three one thousand. I think that's how we bonded, my friend. Yeah, and if you're not, you. and if you not, if you if you grew up, and if you're a Latino, who doesn't like Friday, you're the new three one thousand. Yeah, dude, for real. Because okay, I, I understand you don't like blood in, blood out. How could you? But no, but you don't, don't like Friday. That. How? You don't like Friday after next. <laughs> Any of the Fridays, bro. I'm sorry, all of them are great. I loved all of them. And and people, representation is so representation is so important because you must watch Friday ten thousand times, but you remember how those two Mexicans looked who fucking gave that fool the fucking PCP. <laughs> the Leno. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking the and, entire fucking time. And um. How you expect a show like this food not to be successful when all you remember from Napoleon Dynamite is Napoleon being with those two cholos going to the prom? Right. Oh, my doom, God. Doom, when doom, they pick them up and they pick them up in a lowrider. I read that those two cholos were, were rival everywhere. gang members, were bro. everywhere. Those two cholos were from rival gangs, really? bro. And they brought them together so they could do this the movie. There you go, bro. Representation, very important, man. Representation is very important. Oh, there's also another Latino comedian that came around before me named um, Chris Fonseca. Uh, Just the other day. That guy, he has cerebral palsy, and he was the only Latino to be on, besides Greg Giraldo, to be on, on David Letterman, on, late, on the late show Later Letterman. No way. And when they got rid of the guy who books the late show with Le- David Letterman, I remember they, 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 he got fired because of this. He said some derogatory stuff about Amy Schumer before Amy Schumer blew up. Because um, he, he mentioned stuff about, oh, because she was dating um, Chesonick at the time. And then he goes, oh, his unfunny girlfriend? Oh, no. A comment like that? And then she said, like, screw this guy. This guy's a gatekeeper. You know, he has never booked comedians, female comics ever on a late show. Right. You know? And he he has showcases all over America, and he keeps all the door deal. And never, doesn't book comics for the late show. So That was uh, Brill, right? Yeah, when he was yeah. done, when he was done, I wrote on a big page after everybody wrote, oh, I thought he was fired for booking one Latin comic every twenty, every fifteen years. Ah, and yeah. I, and that's because the first ever Latino comedian to do his show was Fred Chris Fonseca in the nineties. No shit. Then after that, ten years passed, and it was uh, Greg Giraldo. 
And then that's it. And another year passed. Louis C.K. Then El Madrigal. Then it ended. That's it. Then um, four guys. Then they brought it back. Cristela Alonso was a guest. Wow. And but she didn't do stand up. No, she just came she on. She sat as a down guest. and told him to Talked watch about her, her TV show. Her killer show. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, dude. So representation is very important because. Yes. We're, do you feel we're underrepresented now? Right now, bro. Let me tell you, bro. The only I'm, I'm gonna take it back to to um fucking um Chris Rock and him talking about black people um when they when they call it about breaking the the color lines and getting into baseball. What do they call that? Disintegrate. Oh, integrate. Yeah, black people didn't. It, it, People say little Chris Rock's words. People say that that Jackie Robinson integrated integrated baseball. He was just the first black player. Right. Black people they didn't really really integrate baseball. To you started seeing black baseball players that were not good. Right. Wow. So so as important as Jackie Robinson was, all the other guys that nobody knows who they are were were just as important, if not more important. No, no, no what he's really saying that black people didn't really integrate baseball till you started seeing a bunch of black people and saw them, some of them sucked. Right. Because white people have all kinds of baseball players. Right. A lot of them fucking suck. Right. But to be a black person, Black player back then, you have to be just as good as Jackie Robinson, really or way good. better. Right. So, Latinos, Amer Latino comedians ain't gonna. We're not gonna integrate comedy until you start seeing sitcoms that you can say, "Well, that one sucks." Yeah. And this one's good. Right. Unless uh, until there's a time where you could compare two sitcoms at the same time or four Latino sitcoms at the same time, that's integrating. Having being the only one is not integrating. It's just you just got lucky, right? But it, it's not till you start watching five Latinos on on Netflix that you could go, okay, there's a lot of them and some of them ain't good. We've done our job. Do you think support has something to do with it? Yeah, man. Like we need the support. We need people to come out, watch us, talk about that. There's no fucking TV shows with us on it, stuff like that. Yeah, but you, show you, up when there is something. Watch can, when there is something. Watch the show, bro. Leave it on while you're doing drugs. <laughs> if you break into a house, turn it on to Do that Do me show. a favor, man. <laughs> Press record and not watch it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, man, is that I have a problem with is like definitely feel like we're underrepresented, but someone pointed out to me too is like we don't show up when there's someone in town that like like when there's like cuz that's one thing that I make sure I do. When there's somebody in town that's Latino, that's doing comedy. Yeah. If I'm there at home, I'm not on the road with you or I'm not doing shows, yeah. I'll fucking show up and support. Like, like just for example, like Kevin Hart's a big African-American comedian. When he performs in San Jose at the big shows, there's a hell of Filipinos and Mexican at those right. shows. Now, when there's a, 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 a show with George Lopez in San Jose... There's not the same amount of black people at that show that they were for when you compare it to the amount of Latinos that were there to see Kevin Hart. Right. Or or I go to a comedy show and there's not enough there's not enough black people to say that I have a black audience. So do you think that audience is needed? Because no, they're also because white black people also, you know, if they see a Spanish name, they're gonna f swipe left because they might think it's Spanish. We talked about that earlier. Right? Yeah, we're, and we're in the last episode. If my name was different. Would I have thought? Would I have thought things were different for me? But me having the hair, yeah, really helps me. Right. People click. You look wild. You see you on there. This guy's irreverent. You look, he's irreverent. <laughs> Bush, I'm telling you, if you have a one-hour special on, on Netflix, I'll be seeing your special pop up after I watch Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Oh man, history for fools. Fuck, you have to add on this comedy epic. What's next? Chinese food or pirates? Pirates or Chinese food? You guys, I want. Here's the thing, because um, 
We're going to take a break after this, right? And do it, and then dig in and, and do more stuff. Yeah, because, and, and we would like your suggestions. You know, one of the things that me and him talk about, were, we talked about pirates, we talked about Chinese food, we talked about um, in, uh, evangelical pastors. That's right. So if you, I, I want to hear what the audience <laughs> has to say about what they think we should talk about next. And I don't know, we'll maybe do a hat where we pull a, yeah. a name or we come up with something. Yeah. But we want your help uh, to see what you guys are interested in. Let us know what you thought about this because we're also this, this yeah. is new and we're yeah. making improvements. Also, man, um, getting back to the Native Americans, I forgot to, I, I, I kept talking about all this stuff. But and if you go to a powwow, you ever been to a powwow? The guy who hosts the powwow, he's fucking hosting and doing stand-up comedy for 10 hours straight. It's like, like a, a marathon. marathon. It's like Jerry Lewis up there. And he's doing improv. He's doing native jokes, stuff that they get They're only. They're out there, too. They're dying. He's busting out aunties. Wow. Have you ever been to a powwow? No, bro. Uh, we I on a property that I lived in when I first met you, that property that yeah, I lived bro. in the country, we had powwows on that property. And all night you can hear them laughing. You can hear uh, them laughing. Hot, laughing. Yeah. And there's a lot of funny Native Americans from Canada that are on TikTok, bro, that are, are not comedians, that are just funny, bro. Right. Funny. Now, there's a guy, bro, that he has a, a, a joke. He says that, um, fuck. He likes, he's like this, talking like a Native American. A lot of these young Natives, they need to go back to the old way of eating, you know, stuff on the earth and start eating more fry bread and going out there and capturing and eating off the land. Then you hear, I want some money for your house, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I'd like to have, uh, uh, I'd like to have the uh, number five, please. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I'm so happy we did this. Me too, man. And um, you th we, when we do the other ones, we should just keep it to one hour and then move on or just keep doing like this series? I, Whatever. I hey. like the series. Me too. I hey. like the series. All right. But I want to hear what people have to say. Again, this is a work in progress, man. This is our first time doing this. We chose comedy because it was something we know. Easy. Was it hard? Yeah. And the next, and it actually was harder than I thought it would be. And um, uh, for the other, for for the comments right here on the bottom, you, you didn't talk about this guy. You didn't you didn't mention Samoan comedians. Yeah, we missed a lot of people, but we yeah we mentioned Filipinos, Edwin Samoan, Joe Coy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rex Navarrete, the original Filipino, right, and the Hawaiian, yeah. the, the the famous Hawaiian comedian from Hawaii, Bumba Bumbakai, Bumbatai, Anthony Bumbatai. That's the guy that Paul Rodriguez spent was living at living with him in Hawaii for about a whole year oh, doing stand up. Okay. We ran out of money, we, so we're trying to make this entertaining. And again, it's just two two fools. We smoke fools. a lot of weed talking about this stuff. We're like, we should do a podcast. So if we miss something, we're not trying to miss it. We're not trying to overlook it. Hell yeah. And we Luckily, might touch, we might do a second version of this. Maybe. B maybe. Shout out to Lisa. Hell yeah. Throwing the knowledge. Philip Wedge over there. Phillip back in action. Handling business, Thank you, Paul. Oh, Paul. Butch. Thank you, Butch. <laughs> Escobar. Pablo Escobar here. <laughs> History for fools. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, man, I had a blast with you. Thanks so much for 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 uh, for letting me do this with you. Good I can't night, wait man. for the next one. I can't wait one. to hook up again. Fuck yeah! All right, you guys, see you on the next one.